This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Okay, we've got us a new compressor here that's supposedly bad. Another company was out here. Replaced the uh, reversing valve there, then that compressor there was replaced, and they've had a bunch of problems. They've had a couple pressure switches snap off. Now we're here to see if the compressor's bad and see whether or not why it keeps going bad. They replaced the contactor, which we're looking at that, and we're seeing looks like most of the wires might be actually under there somewhat halfway right. The wires down here, you can see how they are. They were kind of half chingle changled in there. So we're redoing that. All right, so we went through and redid those. Checking this 60 amp contactor, which is a little overkill, but maybe that's all they had. It definitely ain't gonna fail anytime soon. We're running all these compressors off of one freaking supply breaker, not um, fusing them individually or nothing like that. Looks like we got fans up here that might be the fuses for that. So you got fans going to a fuse F1. Let's keep on investigating here and see what we got for the compressor part. We just checked the resistance there. Let's see what we got here at the actual compressor at the terminals, which I always like to check these to make sure that they're not broke off, burned off, whatever. So we're zeroing out the meter to see where we're at. We have no resistance in these leads other than 0.1 ohms. That's what a good set of leads are. When you get 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and it fluctuates, you have shit leads. So let's go ahead and go down here and check what we have on the actual compressor itself. It was not balanced when I was checking it earlier. So that's what I want to check it down here at the actual terminals. So right there we have 0.6. Jump over to the other one. We have 0 seven it looks like yeah 0.7 and then between these two here we have 0.6 so 0.6 0 0.7 and 0.6 so pretty much equal all the way around which makes me think that's not an issue there now let's look down here at the sight glass and see if the sight glass has got oil in it if it's nasty looking or what i really don't want to replace this if it's unless it's uh actually bad and this thing is only a I think a week or two old. Kind of hard to tell. Very difficult to get in here. Great idea to put this back here at the back where nobody can see it. But that's the way the factory put this thing in here. I see some of the sight glass, but I can't tell. Let's see if maybe we can do a little squirt out of the oil. See if it smells horrible. Okay, so that's the oil right there. You can tell it's fairly clean. Don't really smell horrible, ain't like a burnout or nothing. I'm gonna try to run this thing. I wanna see for myself that it actually has locked rotor or whatever is causing this thing to not run. That looks like that's probably been leaking. You can see all kinds of oil around it. Side glass, looks like crap. Got a bi-flow filter dryer there, which because they are using a hot gas defrost, that you need a freaking bi-flow dryer. So I don't even have the right dryer for that. I might have, actually I might have an HH on the truck, I ain't sure, but unfortunately it's half inch and our supply house didn't have even a half inch dryer. However, if you look back there, it's three eighths back there. And then goes back to half inch again. So I did kill power to this so that I could uh, get in here, but. Okay, here's the wires that they had wire nutted off. So 60 amp circuit feeding this thing. I've got this turned off. I unhooked the portable unit there that they're using to get by with. So we got a gauge on there. Thing you gotta remember, this has got a electronic evaporator, which is half the problem I feel, because it does its own thing and it's not easily diagnosed because it may act up. And you throw in the hot gas defrost, which is more efficient, more issues. So they've got the coil unhooked here. So we're gonna push the contactor and see what our amperage is. One unit's obviously going to kick on. 18 volts. Or 18 amps. See, that suction did not go down. So is rotation going the wrong way? And it's really loud. Generally, when it's loud, you're going the wrong rotation. Okay, we just rotate, uh, rotated any two wires. Let's see what happens this time. Oh, it's quieter. Amperage is 7 amps instead of the other. Oh boy, did you hear that thing shut off? 
That didn't sound good. So maybe it is the right rotation, but man, it sounds to me like she snapped off. Lovely. Okay, so we made a cut here. You can see the crap that's inside the line there. It's not looking so good. Not looking good at all. This is probably gonna happen again. Look how crappy that looks. Not good. Not freaking good at all. All right, I was gonna swap it out to a 3 8 but of course I don't have any of those on my truck. And we got five freaking quarter inches. Went ahead and used a good old fashioned brake cleaner there. Got that out of there. Not very often that metal rusts inside of a refrigerant system, which tells you there's a shit ton of moisture in it. So here's the uh, indicator there. It's screwed. So we're gonna put a one I stole out of one of the three eights or whatever the hell it was I had because it ain't doing me no good sitting in the truck. So we're gonna put that in there. This freaking system's filthy dirty. It's just waiting for a place to blow up again. All right, so right now we went ahead and took out that 90, put a straight pipe. We're gonna go ahead and put some strap around that, took it over to that, reduced it down. Just popped out our liquid injection right there. Look what we find. Yeah, this bad boy is not looking good. If you look at the filter dryer, it's even worse. We'll cut that open, but it looks like mud. Looks really bad. All right, got a little cleaned up there better i'm sure it's just gonna get plugged up again okay we just pulled for a while the big hose is valved off best we can get so far 2600 microns 2600 she kind of bogged out oil looks like hell and you can't see crap it looks like milk this thing's thought had it and of course we're just about out of oil yeah, doing great. It's great. And pressurized blue oil and stuff. Going great. All right, guys, so we're back again. Let it run all night. All I have is that crappy oil, but something's better than nothing. Hey, I did get the newest version of the 550s, which, I mean, this is what's been out for about a year or two or three, something like that. I ain't sure. It is, uh, when you update this, it will work with my scale. So it's got all the same features as my 557s testing it out to see if it's a better version than the first series of 550s because I didn't like them as well but so far I like these they seem like they work just as good as my 557s we gotta see if that transducer in there uh, zeroes out any better I know the original ones I didn't like uh, I'm gonna get this thing apart and let's see what we can uh, do with this thing jumping down here like I said I transplanted that from the other one I don't know if that's maybe damaged it wasn't green when I put it in there you can see the other one actually looks halfway decent. That one not so much. So we're gonna check this thing and see what we got as far as microns. Took my gauge off because I wasn't gonna leave it here and have it possibly uh, turn up messing because you never know. Now another new tool I've been playing with lately is the Appion valve core depressor. This one actually locks it up so nothing gets out once you back it out. Rated down to 20 microns. So far it's been holding pretty steady and uh, not uh, giving me any issues. Prior to that I was using these by C and D, which these have been all right, but these thread on, Appion's always been better at the way they do their machining. It's always easier to thread. All right, so we got it on there. Let's go ahead and crank it in. Yeah, you heard a little something change on the pump, but I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal. Let's see where we're at here. I can tell you this much, it's gonna be a lot better than what it was. Wow, look at her go. Now, I'm hoping that the valve downstairs is open because I'm pretty sure it's still calling. Let's go ahead and valve this off. Let's see what happens here. Yep. No, horrible though, like it was before. Look at that stuff. Look at that. That's valved off, just so you see it. Well, we got the moisture out. Let's take a look at this freaking pump. That's looking a little slim shady. That looks really ratty. So we're holding good there. I'd be curious to know how it is on the other freighter port. That'll make me feel a little better. And back this out. And let's switch it over to the other one. Look how easy that comes off. That's what I like about the uh, Appion stuff. This would make me feel better. Because like I said, I like pulling for both hoses. But look how, 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 how hard it is to get in there. It's 
tight. Let's foul this in. Let's see what we got here. Look at them cookies. They're dropping. And look at that that rate. This is what I love here. You know the rate you're losing, you're going down at. We're at 20s. Let's go ahead and give it a minute. We'll valve off. May let it run a little longer. I just want this stupid thing completely good as you can get it. Let's just go ahead and valve off. Still going down. It's valved off. We'll go ahead and shut the pump down. Change this oil. Yep, it's holding in there about six, six ten. We got some new oil. I keep my old one here for the, the bucket. Yeah, it's looking a little shoddy. Company pump. I wasn't gonna leave mine in here. Looking a little ratty. All right, got our new oil in there. A little hazy already. Whatever. Let's make it happen. So the micron gauge, even on the other side, we finally dropped down to about five. Eight. That means we are stable, we don't have any leaks, should be good to go, but let's go ahead and pull just a little longer. All right, while we're waiting on that, which I know that you can't pull moisture out of POE oil, but you can get it out of most of the, you know, the piping and some of the oil that's in there, but either way, I'm gonna do my best to get it. So our biggest problem I see here is I think this switch here got set up wrong. I think there was a mistake done where they thought it cut out at zero and that's really the cut in it's cut in minus differential is cut out so we're going to lower that down just ballpark it here we're going to cut in about 23 which is negative 10 which is kind of common around here kind of get a ballpark there and then we'll recycle it from here yeah you can do it off your nitrogen tank but what i believe happened it may never shut off. It's hard to say. Uh, twice the cap tube there snapped off, so we've got a big old freaking PVC jacketed hose there, whatever, wrapped around it. And I even went to the actual liquid injection. I think, yeah, I already showed you that that was plugged up. And that's based off the temperature of the head. All the wires and everything in there are tied up. Uh, a while back, uh, from what I've heard, that broke, so somebody had already repaired that, and that's all whopper jaws looking, but when you have to add those brutal locks, because that's, uh, I guess, all that was available, then there you go. This here, like I said, it looks like it's been leaking, it's oily. We'll scan it with the leak detector when we get done. Most likely, we're gonna have to chop that out anyway. That oily substance on there, it's hard to say with that, because, well, you know that, honestly, that could be from, yeah, I bet you anything, when that hose, Capillary tube there broke off. I bet you anything it blew oil all over and that's probably where that's from. Yeah, it's not really moving. It's moving point, point one. It's, it's not going any further. So we're gonna go ahead and valve off. We're gonna go ahead and eliminate this here. Take that off. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing charged liquid. Uh, from what the chart says, cause this does not have a receiver if you notice. And it's kind of like a floating head system. So since it has electronic expansion valve, it doesn't need to have the head pressure control type deal where you have to have a certain drop for it to work. And according to what this chart says in your feedage, uh, it's half inch lines, eight and a half, 15 foot. Should be about eight and a half pounds, potentially 8.8. .8. So some, somewhere between eight and a half and nine. Okay, we're all up to there. Let's go ahead and bleed our hoses out all the way up to our Schrader ports. That way the manifold's completely emptied out. Version 3.5, so you do gotta update it. That's one thing that I had to do before it would work. It was like at one point something or another prior to. Close, open. All right, we're ready to make this happen. Let's go into the menu just like normal, go down to weight scale, refrigerant charging. Let's go into units down under settings. Let's go down to pounds instead of ounces. And it does grams and all that. So if you're doing small stuff, you're good to go. So we're at 0 0.01 to 00. zero. So we're gonna dump this all in liquid. Let's make it happen. Here we go. Hopefully that side glass starts to change green. I don't know if it's going to, probably won't, but I'm sure you guys are smart enough to know this, but don't put the Schrader core in before you get the system in a positive pressure because you will suck crap right into it when you're trying to put it in. I got newbies and I got pros. I got a little everything watching me. So, you know, sometimes I got to mention the obvious just because you never know who's watching. 
I've been using the new Appions that I got. They are a little nicer. I hate switching over until I get these wore out, but they still work fairly decent. And that's the cooler. Okay, like I said, some of these wires looked really smashed up. They've been twisted and they were fiddle farted and everything else. So I went through here and completely redid all those. They're a little tight, but like I said, I have some 12. I couldn't find any 10. So we're just chopping off the ends of this and putting a new piece underneath there so nothing breaks off after the fact. So we went ahead. That's the only one I had there. I had to move some of these little clips around because they've been stripping them out because they're using too big of a screwdriver head in there. So I stole some from down below, moved it up here, fixed that one up. Basically just had to jump over here to this one. This one's only pulling like 10 amps, same with that one there. So the wire will handle that no problem. Uh, just until we get the other unit up and running. This one here is ready to go. Got that low voltage hooked back up. Got the amp meter on there. Uh, I've got four pounds in there. So let's see if it kicks on the right direction. I don't know if it is or isn't. That's backwards. Oh, that sounds better. All right, it kicked right on. So far, everything looks pretty normal. 160 and 25, so negative seven. Let's go ahead and get this thing in there slowly and get her charged up, see how she starts acting. Well, we can tell that it's feeding the right tube because we're going through the first valve and down the suck and we're running in cooling mode. You can't always trust that sight glass with these freaking things not having a receiver. Head pressure's up there a little bit. We're under a, a heavy load. I mean, it's somewhere in the 40s down there. I think the cooler's kind of bleeding over to it. There's eight pounds. I think that indicator's damaged. It, it's got like a speck of green there in it. I don't know. It, it may have been damaged from setting out for so long. I don't like that glass. Looks like it's about broke. Okay, according to this, we're at 3.7 subcooling, 47 superheat. I think the next step up on our charging chart here is this half inch line, 20 to 25, no more than maybe 9.14. See where we get our subcooling at just for giggles here. Yeah, it's starting to flash off here though. And before you guys get all fruity-fied about it, just keep in mind that every one of those lines right here are 3 8 on that condenser. And it's 3 8 right there coming out, that's, that's why I didn't worry too much about less than one foot. Kind of like gas meters. You ever notice that they go down to small diameter and back up again? I noticed when I was taking these caps off that they were loose. Would have been nice to know that. Maybe we could have got a little bit better vacuum, but I'm pretty happy with where we're at. All right, at 28. We got up here. 34. So somebody's off. I ain't sure what, but somebody is off. It goes down. Five. Yeah, but you've seen the torque that compressor had when it kicked on. That's what most likely broke the shaft off the motor to the uh, scroll plate. Got a little bit more. You ain't supposed to pull these into a negative. It's a fine balance between that and kicking on. See, she's holding right there at 20. You got 20 there. So that's what's funny. The gauge is 20 now. And that one's 20. Let's do a little bit of a creak. Let's see if it comes on about 23, which is what I'm shooting for. There it goes. And 25 now. Come on. Yeah, 25 is where it kicked on at. Close enough. All right. It's kicking off at about five pounds, and it has a relief sometime in it. I'm happy with that. We're not pulling into a negative. Let's do it one more time. There we go. Let her, let her roll out about five. There it held. There's a little bit of a turn. See how that does. Now you can do this with the suction side there too. 29 pounds. Let's go ahead and check it on the suction side over here if I can get on it. That way we can see whether we got a drop across that builder. So that, oh, we do have a drop. That's why the gauges are different. Yeah, that builder's junk, great. So we got 34, 30, about 34 there, and we got about 29 over there. So that suction filter's gonna need to be removed. Spectacular, spectacular. Okay, let's check out the digital gauge here just for giggles. We got 25.9. I'd say 26. 
stuff down to here. Same gauge the best way. 30. You have about four pound drop, and that's usually enough to condemn it. Usually it's three. I'm gonna let it run for a while, let it suck the crap into it. So we've got our date for the compressor, amperage is at pull down, outdoor air temperature, PSI cut out, cut in. And we'll go downstairs. See what we got going on down there. Let this thing just run. 26 degrees in here. So it's running good. Coil's clean. All right, so we are still pulling down. I think we're gonna go ahead and pump this down. I got a piece of straight pipe. I'm gonna unsweat this thing and pull it out. Still got my vacuum pump and everything up here so we can get this done. One thing I've seen I don't like is 46 degrees uh, super heat on the compressor. Be nice that was a little bit uh, cooler, but that's the only thing I see that's crappy. We got five degree uh, subcooling, and uh, like I said, somewhere right around 9.1 pounds, which is around the area that underneath the uh, half inch there. But so I mean, it might just take a smidge more. But like I said, I watched that temperature jump up. Now, granted, we do have half inch line all the way down there, so that's going to be stopped down there at the evaporator, not up here. So you will have some extra capacity to the line set. Um, by doing it down below versus up here. Let's go ahead and get this pump down, see if we can get this uh, cut out. Now I've got liquid and suction both cut off. I've got the solenoid off on the, ouch, reversing valve. Uh, my worry is that if that was to release, I'm gonna get nailed with uh, nine pounds of refrigerant through that there. Now I can relieve any pressure on the suction right there. So we're gonna relieve that there. We're going to, Likely cut this out here and then pull it out after we we'll heat it up and pull out the remainder because it's just too tight. Uh, actually, we got this the back here on the compressor. I could undo it there, but I really don't want to trash my seal because once you compress it, it's usually crap after that. And then uh, we're going to expand it after we heat it up and anneal the copper because it's hard copper. This was never going to be a video, but I went ahead and just documented it. All right, as I wait for another bottle of gas because we have a problem with getting these in the right spot. Went ahead and cut this one apart. You can see how that is really absorbed in there, really wonderful. You can see really what's going on there. And then this right there is really a nice mess. Lovely. That was that nasty crap that I was seeing there. Yep. Looking good in the hood. We've got it swapped out. Took that pipe right there, took it down to there. Down there, I ended up using my uh, Kilmore tool, expanded it. So I can drop it down into it instead of trying to do uphill. We are running 3.6 degrees subcooling. Our superheat is coming up a little bit. We are at 37. Sight glass still flashing like Banshee. Uh, tried repositioning before and after. Didn't make much of a difference. So that, that dryer seems to be clear. All right, we're at 20. We're below freezing at least. All right, so now you can push down on it. It's not going anywhere. Condenser coil was just clean. Run 270 head, so 106 condensing. So 87, 97, 107. We're about 30 degrees over ambient. Super heat's back to uh, 40. Like I said, we had already checked the temperature across that filter dryer. When we get closer to shut off point, I'm going to maybe add a little more refrigerant. I just want to make sure that we don't have so much in there that it ends up tripping the head pressure. Like I said, there's no receiver. Kind of going through here on final checks and uh usually i shoot for 23 but they're even saying going 26 and currently i was at 25 and two cut out so we're really in the ballpark here so we're looking at about 25 pounds suction let's uh, go down there and see how the transducer what it's reading because if your transducer's off or your temperature sensor's off that'll throw off your superheat it'll also cause you all kinds of other issues so the sensor's got to be accurate that's all been checked from what i've been told but let's go see what we can find out all right so I don't remember what the buttons mean, and the buttons kind of suck because they don't give you a cheat sheet. I did a video on this once before. I might have to go back through and watch through it. All right, the pressure is 24 PSI, so that looks pretty accurate to me. Had to go through and find that manual again on one of my old menu on my old videos I did on this thing. So we're going through, and we're going to double check superheat, which I had about six on that. Um, so we're just kind of going through everything, make sure everything's okay. Defrost termination temps, how many defrosts, all that happy jazz. Okay, just scanned through everything. Everything seems to be pretty much correct. So I think we're fine on that. We mainly just had a compressor issue. 
room temperature is at 16. It's taken a while. All right, as you can see, possibly, those inside coils have had a shit ton of acid on them. These have two. But guess what? When you really separate it and you get in there deep, you get in there really deep, you can see they've got some back here, about two inches in there. I'm not getting rid of the heat I need to get rid of. Okay, this little wand here is just rigid 3 8 with a compression fitting, a ball valve, and a little 90 bent in the end there. And that allows you to get inside there where the fan blade's at and work that coil. This was supposedly already done, but it sure don't look like it. So let's see if we can get anything out of this to kind of prove my theory here. So we can go right in, right into here. Yeah, look at that, not even coming through. Not even coming through. That's... It's always really, uh, really comforting. Actually, this right here seems to be the best way. You can see it's more of a stream. You can see the black crap that we're knocking out. And we're not even using chemicals. That's why I don't feel like chemicals is always the, the cure-all, but you can see how we're getting through now with some actual velocity. Velocity is the key here. And then I'm kind of shooting straight down to knock it straight down and knock it out. I don't want to knock it back in. To it the uh, wand is kind of nice but main thing is got to get that you you wouldn't think washing a coil is all that intelligent but I'm telling you it's so important and everybody's like oh, okay got her all clean next job and then somebody else has to come do your job for you don't be that guy don't be that guy we washed everything off and uh, just kicked it on probably about four minutes ago. 167, 167 and 22, so 77 degree ambient because of the uh, foil being wet. That it's starting to finally turn green, sorta. See how it goes, I mean, it's Friday and it's 348, so unfortunately, I mean, I'm running out of time. I've done everything you can do to make this thing run right and uh, I don't really want to overcharge it. I might put maybe another quarter pound in there. That's about it. Done up the way I'd want it if it was mine. Watch it a little longer here. Then we might call it a quits. Seems to be holding the dollar bill there pretty good to the point where you can barely pull it off. That, that, that's really a $1 anymore, inflation. So, yeah. Anyhow, it's still flashing. Weight is the key here. I just marked this off three foot, so about nine foot over. And I had about 10 foot over there, whatever. I came up with about 30 foot in my guesstimation. So I added another half pound. So that puts me about 9.8, I think, something like that. I'm gonna quit there. Head pressure still staying down pretty good. We were like 275 before, and now we're running 187. I think that looks a lot nicer. All right, guys, I didn't plan on making this into a video, so I didn't really record like normal, but I've done everything I can do. I've made sure the coil's clean. I made sure the refrigerant's clean. Made sure the filter dryers uh, are non-restricted. I've checked tr uh, pressure drops, temperature drops, checked superheat, subcooling, checked the controller in the evaporator section. Looked at the coil cleanliness, check the sensors on it, the evaporator sensor, the defrost sensor, the pressure transducer, all that. Uh, and defrost set for every 12 hours, which I don't agree with, but whatever. It's worked this long and that wasn't the problem they had prior to. Everything else, we probably will have to come back and change this filter dryer. That's my thought. If you guys enjoyed the video, want to see more like it, do what you got to do. Till next time, later. All right, so we went ahead and just put another half pound in there. I'm still only running 199 on the head. Got nine degrees to 11 degrees subcooling. My discharge temp's 185, that's uh, seven to eight inches from the compressor. So we're not in the danger zone there. We're running uh, 14, uh, negative 14 evaporator coil uh, temperature and we're staying solid. And it's starting to turn a little bit green, which I think that indicator's bad. Now I think I'm done, later. Out of here.